The Gen 6 Pokemon designs don't have a lot of problems. I mean, there were only 72 new Pokemon, and they did a pretty good job overall. But today we are talking about the worst designs of Generation 6. I know Gen 1 is all everyone wants to talk about right now, but we already put off this episode, so we're doing this. Whereas Gen 5 had a lot of Pokemon that were too artificial or didn't really look like Pokemon, Gen 6 had only one family. Honage, Dublade, and Aegislash. Don't get me wrong, I love these Pokemon, especially Honage, but they don't really look like Pokemon. The really good inanimate Pokemon have some expression to them, like Litwick, but these guys don't. They also look very much like the objects that they're based on. This isn't like Rotom, where the possessed appliance actually changes in appearance when the Rotom is in it. These guys are just swords. I also don't like that Han Edge is basically just two pink Han Edges with nothing else really to them. I don't really like Twin and Triplet Pokemon, which is why Han Edge is my least favorite of this family. I've also expressed here that I don't really like Pokemon that look too much like humans, and that is the problem I have with Hawlucha. And again, I actually like Hawlucha overall. The thing is that I was really excited to finally have a fighting, flying Pokemon, but Hawlucha is not what I was expecting, mostly because it doesn't really look like a flying type. I mean, it has bird qualities, but it doesn't even really look like it could fly. My immediate impression of it is that it's just a person in a bird-themed Lucha Libre costume. If at least its wings flared outward instead of hanging limply, although I do get that they're supposed to look like tassels, or if it had a tail, or maybe if its legs looked more like eagle legs, any of that could have made Halucha work better for me. But the more prevailing problem with Gen 6 is when they try to take all of these different ideas and details, like I talked about in the best of Gen 6, but then this combination falls flat. Slurpuff and Aromatisse are great examples of this. Look at Swirlix. It's simple and silly, but it is cute. You can clearly tell that it's cotton candy, but there's another element that you probably can't tell if you don't already know. It's a dog, probably a Bichon Frise. And you know what? That makes perfect sense. These dogs look like cotton candy. Swirlix Pokedex entries don't play up the dog angle, but Slurpuff entries do. Apparently it has a fantastic nose, but Slurpuff barely looks more like a dog than Swirlix, and it no longer looks like cotton candy. And considering it looks more like a cupcake with a cherry on top than, well, anything fluffy, the Bichon Freeze connection doesn't work anymore. I also just don't like its stupid look. It was cute on Swirlix, but Slurpuff cannot pull it off. Spritzy is also pretty cute and simple. It has an obvious aspect, it's a bird, and one that can be a little harder to tell. But the name gives us a hint. It's a perfume spritzer. It also has a mask, and even though it looks like a Plague Doctor mask to literally everyone, it's meant more as a masquerade mask. Between the perfume and the masquerade mask, you can start to see what the motif is here. And Aromatisse adds this burlesque dancer thing that helps make that motif clearer. It's about extravagance. But Aromatisse just does not work. It still doesn't look like a perfume spritzer or a bottle, it looks even less like a bird, and it's trying to show off its sexy leg, which is totally off-putting. I think if they wanted to go with the burlesque dancer thing, they could have made it more of a flamingo or an ostrich, since those go well with feather fans and skirts. Making Aromatis more bird-like I think would have really helped it along. But the other option would have been to go where everyone expected. When we saw Spritzy, we all thought Plague Doctor. Plague Doctors stuffed the nose of their masks with fragrance to cover up the stench of the plague, so the perfume connection still works. And I think it not being a Plague Doctor is a huge reason why a lot of people don't like Aromatisse. And then there's Diggersby. This was the biggest disappointment of my playthrough of Y. I really liked Bunnelby. It's pretty boring design-wise, but it looks way more promising than any other early game rodent, and I really liked the whole digging with your ears thing. And then it evolved. Diggersby has a much more complex design, and in theory, it actually should work really well. It's partially a construction worker, and you can kind of see that in how it's burly and scruffy. It's stereotypical, but it is there. The really good part is that its ears are like excavator claws, which goes wonderfully with the construction worker thing. But the fur around its middle looks like a barrel. And when you pair that with the scruffy, dirty look, it looks like a homeless man. 
And not like a charming one like El Chavo or Chavez as we knew him in Brazil. And okay, I don't like that homeless look, but even setting that aside, I don't think it was intentional. What's the relationship between the construction worker and the homeless in a barrel look? Is there some relationship that I don't know about? What is that band of fur supposed to be anyways? It could be a cement mixer, but if that's what they were going for, it is not clear. And those are the worst designs of Generation 6, at least as I see it. But what do you think? If you like any of the Pokemon that I mentioned, or if you think I missed anything, let me know in the comments. And don't forget to leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and share this video with anyone who might be interested. I'm Umbreon Libris, I'll see you in the next chapter. Okay, I can finally go back to playing Let's Go Eevee. <laughs>